Thank you for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Let's get started with prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for another chance to worship in spirit and in truth, and we ask that you would give us instructions now on how to navigate into the and through this new year. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our subject for today is God's already been where we are going. God has already been where we are going. Our text is found in Joshua chapter 1 verse 3 and it simply reads, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. So God has already been where we are going. Fear of tomorrow can be as crippling as slavery to the past, but God is already in our tomorrow. He's already been where we're going. Uh, the child of God do not fear what lies ahead. He holds the future and he holds you and I in his hand. God has gone before us and secured tomorrow on our behalf. Notice, God does not say, everywhere your foot shall trod, I will give to you, but rather he says, I have given unto you. He's already given it to us. He's already done it. He's already done what he has promised to do. With God, there is no yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And do not be led away by divers or different and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by food, which have not benefited those devoted to them. In other words, it is by faith that we walk. And it's by faith that God will uh, accept and lead us into tomorrow. And he will, where he leads, he will provide. And he gives it. And, and we don't have to, to earn it. We can't really can't earn anything from God. We can't be good enough to, to deserve it or we can't work hard enough to earn it. Psalms, chapter, uh, Psalms 94 verse uh, 4 uh, Psalms 90 and verse 4 says, For a thousand years in your sight are as but yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. And besides me, there is no other God, he says. In Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and the last, and besides me, there is no God. Malachi 3 and 6 says, For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. James 1 and 17 says, Every good and every perfect gift is from God, coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variations or shadows due to change. And then Revelations chapter 1 verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Revelation 1 and 17 says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he said, uh, he, he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and uh, the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. He is not only seeing uh, the beginning and the end, he is the beginning and the end. Tomorrow is already today with God, and we should never be afraid to walk into it. Now, God gives us encouragement. Uh, since Joshua had a threefold task uh, to perform, God gave him three special promises 
uh, one for each task. And we're not going to cover all three of them this week. We'll cover one of them, I know. But God would enable, the first one is God would enable uh, Joshua to cross the river and claim the land and defeat uh, the enemies and apportion the land to each tribe as its inheritance. Those are the three tasks. And God gives him promises. God didn't give Joshua an explanation as to how he would accomplish these things because God's people live on promises and not on explanations. I mentioned last week that I would inform, I would give information on how to possess what God has given us. When we trust God's promises and step out by faith, we can be sure that the Lord will give the directions that we need and when we need them. That's how to go in and possess what God has given us by faith, trusting and leaning on his everlasting arm. The first promise that God gave Joshua that he, he, he's, he, he gave him a promise that uh, Israel would enter the land. The Israel would enter the land. Now, over the centuries, God had reaffirmed this promise from uh, his first words to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 to his last words to Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 4. God would take them over the Jordan and into, and into enemy territory, and he would then enable them to claim for themselves the land that he had promised them. God had already given them the land. And it was their responsibility now to step out by faith and claim what God had already given them. The same promise of victory that Moses had, uh, that God had given to Moses in Numbers chapter 11, verse 22 through 25, he reaffirms to Joshua. And he carefully defined the order, or the, or the borders rather, of the land. Israel didn't reach that full potential until the reign of King David and Solomon. The lesson for God's people today is very clear. God has given us all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. And you can find that in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. And we must step out by faith and claim what God has already given us. He has set before his church an open door that nobody can close. You can find that in, in Revelations chapter three, verse eight. And we must walk through that open door by faith and claim new territories for the Lord. It's impossible to stand still in Christian life and service. For when we stand still, we immediately start going backwards. Let us go onward and upward is God's challenge to his church in Hebrews uh, chapter six, verse one. And that means that moving ahead into a new territory, into a new year, into 2021 is uh, our task. Now I read a story about how aircraft squadron captains that uh, whenever a plane takes off or lands on a U.S. aircraft carrier, the captain of that squadron and that particular uh, uh, captain of that plane, the, the, the captain watches from the bridge. Each time a pilot lands a plane or takes off, the captain is always on the bridge uh, looking. And even if the planes are flying around the clock, he stays on the bridge, sometimes catnapping uh, between runs if necessary. And each time a pilot takes off in his jet aircraft and, or lands on the deck of, of one of, the, the, of the, those floating airfields, he knows that his captain is watching. And likewise, we are involved in a spiritual warfare where we are and we can be confident that the Lord, our captain of his army, is with us and he's watching us. His eyes are always on us. 
But more than just that, observing us, he's also there to guide and to, to protect and to lead us into and through battle. Matthew chapter 6, verse 26 says, Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather nor into barns, uh, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them, and, and you are, are, are you not more valuable to him than they? So if God does so much for even the sparrows, the birds, then we are worth more to him than they are. And he's going to do much more for us. Don't forget that Jesus uh, has given us the victory. He's promised us a new home not made by the hands of man. A home on God's celestial shores. He, has, he, he was the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world to save lost mankind. He died one Friday on an old rugged cross, and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early the third day morning, he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and in earth in his hands, power to watch over us. We, even when we sleep and slumber, he never sleeps or slumber. His eyes are always on his children, and we should never be discouraged. Why should we even, why should we be discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for, hev for heavens and heavens uh, and home? When, when Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. All his eyes are on the sparrow and I know that he watches over me. Let us close. That's it for today. God has already been where we are going. So let's go forward with confidence. Our Heavenly Father, we pray now that you will help us to recognize the new promises and the new places that you have for us to go. Uh, we will go by faith, trusting in your promises that you will keep your promise, that you're no shorter than your promise, and you will give us victory, prosperity, and longe longevity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, as we go forward into this new year, let us remember to bring something old into this new year. Bring our discipline in wearing our mask and practicing social distancing, and washing our hands often, and walk by faith and not by sight, leaning on his everlasting arm. And with that, I just dropped the mic. I'm out of here. See you next week. Take care. God loves you, and he will keep every promise that he made. Bye-bye.